Hey, I'm Nathan Tabor with Handling Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a really special guest, uh, become a, a dear friend over the last few months. His name's Harold Vaughn. Uh, Harold, thank you so much uh, for joining the Handling Life podcast today. And can you share with our viewers and listeners a little bit about you and your ministry? Hey, thanks, Nathan. My name is Harold Vaughn. I'm with uh, Christ Life Ministries. Uh, I'm a traveling evangelist. And we basically have three uh, uh, tiers of our ministry. We do ministries in local churches. We do something called prayer advances. And we publish Christian materials. So that's basically the three things that we do. And you've been doing this for a number of years, right? been doing it for a long time about 39 years i can't believe it but uh yeah. you start you started when you were eight <laughs> yeah i graduated from bible school in 1979 and launched out into full-time uh evangelistic work in, in 1980 wow that's um and you, 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 from what i know about you and meeting you i mean you know you meet a lot of people that you kind of yeah they're they're working for the Lord, but there's maybe some ulterior motives, but you've, you know, you're a solid guy. You've got a, a good heart. You've got a good message. The Lord's put placed a, a calling on your life and what he's doing in you and your ministry is really, you know, helping people get grounded in God's word and, and fulfill their calling in their life. So appreciate all the hard work you put into that. Well, we're giving it what we've got and, uh, you know, our goal is to encourage as many people as we possibly can uh, during our tenure on earth. I believe that what we sow here, we reap later. So we're seeking to sow some good seeds uh, that yes. we might reap a harvest in the future. Absolutely. That's a good good word there. So let me ask you this. The Bible is very clear about forgiveness. The Bible is very clear about, you know, not uh, seeking vengeance it's clear about the seed of bitterness. You know, the Bible very clearly lays that out. But what do you say and in, in my own life? And I'm sure in yours, you know, the person who's done us wrong, um, stole from us, cheated us, broke our heart, um, you know, did whatever to us on a practical side. How can someone take God's word and start applying it to that in their lives to you know, work on that forgiveness in their heart? Well, I think there's a tremendous misunderstanding about the whole topic of forgiveness. We have to comprehend that forgiveness is a choice to release a debt. Forgiveness is not an emotion. It's a choice. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a decision. And forgiveness is a decision to release a debt. It's not denying what the other person did. It's not pretending it didn't happen. It's not uh, trying to understand why the perpetrator or offender did what they did. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is simply uh, the choice to let go, to release a debt of something we're holding against somebody else. And this is something you can do regardless of your feeling, because your feelings, because it's it's a decision. It's not it's it's not it's not a emotion. It's a choice. It's not a feeling. So I think that uh, forgiveness is absolutely imperative because it's a commandment by God. And even the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer teaches us to forgive. Uh, Lord, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It says, be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So forgiveness is not an option. And you know, uh, forgiveness is really just extending the grace to other people that God has extended to us. Because in Christ, he absorbed our sins. He took our liabilities. He suffered uh, for our iniquities. He was bruised for our transgressions. So uh, when we forgive, we're absorbing the liability that somebody else deserves uh, to pay. And I think that forgiveness is absolutely difficult, but absolutely tremendous and we're obligated to do it regardless of how we feel yeah and then you know in that last point there of forgiveness being difficult i think a lot of times in my life too um christians don't want to talk about that forgiveness is hard forgiveness is not easy sometimes it it hurts and it you know you forgive them and it still hurts and so um 
would you agree? I mean, it's a, it's a choice, but like the, the conversation Peter had with Jesus, we got to keep forgiving. <laughs> there's nowhere in the Bible where it says forgiveness is easy, is it? No, there's nothing easy about forgiveness. When Jesus was on the cross, he prayed, Father, forgive them. Uh, the, 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 and, and when Stephen was being stoned, he said, Lord, don't lay this sin to their charge. So it's not a feeling. It's not easy. It's not a fuzzy wuzzy. It's not waiting for an avalanche of emotion to overtake us. No, it's a choice. And it's very, very difficult at first. But the deeper the hurt, the deeper the wound, uh, the more we, we're so absorbed in it and obsessed on it. But there's a way to get out of this pit. And it's by choosing to release the debt. Now, uh, let me say this. You can forgive people who have hurt you, even if they're not alive. And you can just work this out between you and God. Often people say, well, I think I ought to go and tell the person I'm forgiving them. If they're not asking for your forgiveness, you should not even include them in the conversation because they don't even think they need forgiveness probably. So forgiveness is something you work out between you and the Lord. Now, look, when somebody has ripped you off, stolen from you, especially a churchy crook, okay, a churchy con man, and they're, we're loaded up with them. And when somebody has wronged you, lied to you, abused you, insulted you, taken advantage of you, uh, it hurts and it hurts deep. But I want to tell you that when you forgive, uh, you release a prisoner and then you discover that the prisoner was you. So you're not only releasing their debt uh, for what they've done to you, but God releases you from your prison when you choose to forgive them. God treats us like we treat other people. Now, think about Job. You know, he lost his home. He lost his health. He lost his herds. I mean, he lost everything. And he was out on a, on a ash heap uh, scraping his boils and his his discouraged wife told him he ought to just curse God and commit suicide. And don't be too hard on Job's wife because look what she had lost. I mean, look what she had been through. But here he was in, in, in an absolute pit of depression and sickness and, and affliction. And what does the Bible say? That God released Job from his captivity when he prayed for his friends. He prayed for his, his attackers. He prayed for the people that had accused him. He, he prayed for the people that told him that the reason he was in the, such a bad shape was because of the sin of his own heart. But God released him from his bondage when he prayed for his friends. So I want to say this, that when you choose to release a debt, that's a verbal thing you do in prayer between you and God. Lord, I choose to forgive this person for hurting me when I was a child. Lord, I choose to release the debt. I'm not going to hold this against them anymore. Lord, I'm not going to seek vengeance. I'm turning this over to you. It's between you and them. It's out of my hands. It's in your hands. Now, once you've done that in prayer before God, then when those thoughts come back to your mind and there will be reoccurring negative emotions, I'll guarantee you, you're going to have reoccurring, the deeper the hurt, the more often and the more painful the memories that come back to mind. But when those memories come back, here's what you do. You say, now, Lord, I want to pray that you would save so-and-so, my offender. Lord, I want to pray you would bless this person. I want to pray you would help them. God, I pray you'd have mercy upon them. Lord, I pray you'll have uh, mercy upon uh, their family. And as you begin to pray that kind of a prayer, what happens over time is your negative emotions will reverse. You'll find a reversal. And instead of wanting vengeance and feeling your blood pressure escalating, uh, what will happen is you'll actually get to the point where you begin to feel pity for the people that have wronged you because you know that vengeance is mine. God says, I will repay. So you're actually going to have a reversal of uh, negative emotions and you're going to begin, you're going to begin to actually feel compassion for them. Uh, back long ago, I had, had a, I bought a car and uh, I bought a motor a 350 Chevrolet motor like they put in race cars, okay? So I employed a Christian brother to uh, put this motor in my new car. Now, he put the motor in the car. The only problem was he put the gaskets on the heads uh, backwards and it cooked the motor. So I went to him afterwards and I said, now, look, you know, we got a problem here. You've ruined my car. I paid him to do this work. Well, he wouldn't do anything about it. Well, you know what? Man, I was boiling mad. 
I mean, every time I thought about it, you know, my blood pressure would spike. I was all upset. When I would see him in Lowe's uh, coming down the aisle, I'd go around uh, uh, the other way so I wouldn't have to see him. I didn't want to see his face because I'd been wrong. I'd been ripped off. I'd been hurt. I had sought justice but couldn't find it. And you know something? There's nothing wrong with seeking justice. The problem is you seldom find it. And when you've sought justice and can't find it, you've got to forgive. So I, I just went out and I said, no, Lord, I want to forgive this man for lying to me. I want to forgive this man for taking advantage of me. I, I want to forgive this man. It's cost me thousands of dollars. And in those days, that was a lot of money to me. I'm just telling you. And I began to pray for him. I began to ask God to have mercy upon him. I began to pray that God would have mercy upon his family. And would you believe that over a period of months, my negative, my negativity and my my hostility and my vengeful spirit absolutely disappeared. And, and, and I began to pray for him. And I, it, it was so helpful to me because what I did in forgiveness, not only released him, it released me from my prison, my bondage of bitterness. Yeah. So the Lord was able to work. Not about, we don't know about how the God worked in his life, but God was able to work in your life. Yes, and that's the important thing. This is not about the other person. Look, everybody's going to be taken advantage of. We're all going to be lied to. Sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes it's unintentional. Sometimes it's willingly. Sometimes it's unwillingly. Sometimes people offend us knowingly. Sometimes it's unknowingly. But that's really irrelevant. Uh, the main person in forgiveness is us. And, and that's why the Lord told us to be tenderhearted. That's the opposite of being hard-hearted. Be yes. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And if the Lord has released me from my mountain of death, from my incredible, willful sins, my, my innumerable transgressions, if the Lord has released me from all of that bondage and that junk, then I have to extend that kind of grace to the people who have wronged me. And I want to tell you, this is the way to live. Life is too short to go through it with all this emotional baggage and this hurt and bitterness and all the rest of it, thank God we can dump this stuff at the foot of the cross, walk away, and, and, and by, by simply exercising our will, choosing to release the debt, regardless of our feelings, and then when the thoughts come back to our minds, and Nathan, it's so important to uh, begin to pray for the people who have offended us. Ask God to help them. Ask God to have mercy on them. Ask God to save them. Ask God to bless their family. Ask God to bring them to repentance. Ask God to, to, to be gracious to them. And I want to tell you what, uh, this is the way to live. It's a happy thing when you can lay your uh, head on the pillow at night and not have any malice and bitterness and resentment in your heart. Boy, this is good, isn't it? It is. Forgiveness is great. It's the way to live. And, and, and God has provided other way through Christ and his example for us to forgive other people. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's incredible. So as we wrap up, kind of I do a, a lightning round here, some some answer questions, quick answers. And then I want to get some contact information for you for for other people to learn more about you and your ministry. Is there any Christian, if they're being honest, who doesn't struggle with this issue? <laughs> well, well, some people are better forgivers than others. OK. I, and depending on your temperament type, you know, you know what I'm saying? And yes. if you're one of these laid back type people, you tend not to take offense. But if you're a high strong person, if you're prophetic, uh, you know, you're going to have, you're going to deal with this. But I think everybody has to deal with this. Uh, we're going to be wronged by our family members, our friends, our enemies, uh, fellow church workers, from religious leaders. I mean, offenses are going to come. But, but I think everybody has to learn uh, how to forgive, what forgiveness is, and then how to follow up uh, after we release those debts. And the running theme, as you've discussed in this, is it's your relationship with God. You can't do it yourself. You can't do it on your own. The closer you get to God, the easier it does become to forgive. But from a, a flesh side, from a human side, that doesn't make sense, right? Well, that's exactly right. And it's like somebody said, um, you know, if it's not going to make a whole lot of difference in five years, it probably ought not to make a whole lot of difference right now. 
And the, and the truth is, some hurts are so deep, some wounds are so severe, some abuses are so tragic and so personal. I, I'm, I'm not making light of anybody that's been wounded, offended, abused, or hurt. I'm, I'm just telling you that you've got to forgive. You've got to choose to release that debt. And as you walk with God, you learn forgiveness is a way of life. I think there's an art of forgiveness. There's an yes. art. And we live a lifestyle of forgiveness because, you know, people are going to say things. People are going to do things. I was at church last week. And would you believe it? A guy came up to me afterwards who was a political left-wing activist in an independent church, believe it or not. And he railed on uh, the Baptist. He railed on uh, certain political leaders. He just went to town full of a bitterness and man i'm sitting there thinking why are you attacking me what did i do what did i say but this was what was in his heart so i had to deal with him and, and we all have to deal with wrongs that are done, done to us and i think as we learn to walk the calvary road so to speak um then forgiveness becomes a natural way of life and we you know you know you know nathan the thing that's important is the recovery time and you know you're growing in grace when you you can recover quicker and rather than taking days, weeks, months, or years to work through it, you can work through the thing like Johnny on the spot. And then when the thoughts come back to mind, you immediately turn them to prayer. And there's a quicker release time. There's a quicker turnaround of the, that emotional negativity. And I think that's what maturity is all about. Yeah. And then what I have found in my life, and I'm sure in yours, and I want to do another podcast on this and break it all out is as we start to work on forgiving those who have done us wrong, then we got to start thinking about who we've done wrong. Mm, mm, mm. And now that's a whole nother topic, yeah. right? Cause then that's dealing with our pride and dealing with our own of, Hey, you know, that person over there hurt me, right? They did me wrong, but, God really started working in my life a few years back of who had I done, who felt that way about me as I felt about that other brother or sister. Boy, that's, that's the truth. I got, I got some things to say about that, but I'll say this, you know, when you think about what others have done to you, if you'll just stop and think about what you've done to others, that puts it in perspective. And that, that'll, that'll settle you down. That'll mellow you out a little bit when you think about the people that you lied to, stole from, took advantage of, disrespected, gossiped about, or whatever. Then, you know, it's like I, I was talking to a fellow one time. I had to apologize for the way I responded to him. And you know what he said to me? He said, well, I've done worse. He said, I've done worse. So what he was saying is, Harold, uh, what you did was wrong. But I've done the same thing. And that, and he had such a calm disposition. And that helped me to comprehend that, uh, hey, hey, of course, people are going to wrong me. But, but when I recollect of how people have been so gracious uh, in forgiving me and releasing me from my sins, that it, it just helps me to have a yeah. heart. To Isn't it pretty cool heart. how then with that type of person that, that you develop that relationship with, like I trust someone more. When they come and say, hey, I told a, you know, a mistruth here. I did this wrong. I had the wrong spirit. I said, you know, I got aggravated and I'm sorry about that. I'd rather work with someone like that and be around someone like that than someone who does things and then won't admit them. Well, candidness is so rare that uh, it's respectable because if you ever find somebody that's willing to own up and uh, tell the truth and take responsibility. It's so rare. It's refreshing, it's refreshing. to people. And, and I, I found like 99.9.9.9.9% of people, when I ask their forgiveness, they are happy to forgive me and they make little of it. Like when I was a kid uh, um, in elementary school, the first grade, there was a widow woman who had a, a grocery store, uh, what we call a service station, okay, Exxon. And when we were in the first grade, me and my comrades, we would go over and one of us would distract her. And then one of us would go and steal the cigarettes from under the counter or go and stick her in just to steal the Tony the Tiger uh, keychains. I probably had a hundred of them. And when I became a Christian, I had about six people I had to clear my conscience with and she was one. 
And boy, was I nervous. I had the cotton mouth disease. You know, I went up there and I said, Mrs. Owen, I, I have to ask your forgiveness. And and, and, and I said, I, I stole from you. You know what she said? She said, Harold, all children do that. I said, Mrs. Owen, uh, I don't know what other children do, but I'm responsible for me. And what I did was wrong. Will you forgive me? And she blew it off and forgave me. To her, it wasn't anything. To me, it was everything. Yep. To her, it was a molehill to me. It was Mount Everest. And when I walked out of there, it was like a weight came off my shoulders. Man, I was free. So I did. I was Nathan. I was on a mission. I had six people I had to clear my conscience with. My parents, my brother, and some other people that I had wronged. And boy, as I began to do this, the freedom that poured into my spirit, I mean, the joy that came back in my heart, that the prison bars were broken. Man, I learned, hey, if when I mess up, I'm going to fess up and the quicker, the better and get past this and get on with living. Yep. Oh, it, it's liberating. It's yeah. it's yeah. freeing to go. And yes, it, you get the cotton mouth. Yeah, you get the, the butterflies. You get <laughs> the embarrassment. You get the nerves. You get the pride. And, right. you know, oh, what are they going to think? Well, you know what? You know what they already think? They think you're sorry anyway. So... <laughs> Why hide behind that? And when you go and apologize to them, it's that burden comes off. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. Now, I, uh, I, I, I've asked people to forgive me before who wouldn't. Yeah. But I didn't do it for them. I did it for me and my relationship right. with God. And th those are hard sometimes when you go to someone and say, hey, I want to ask for forgiveness. And they won't. They won't, do they won't even talk to you. Or when they do, they you know, tell you where to go and how to get there. Right. Right. But the scripture is clear about that. What happens then? Who is it? Well, well, once you have done everything in your power to live peaceably with all men, you've done everything you possibly can to put a wrong right, then you're free. Regardless of how they respond, it doesn't make any difference. You've done everything in your power and you're not in bondage in such situations because you exercised your will, taken responsibility. You dealt vertically with God. And then you sought to deal horizontally with your fellow man. Cross points two ways, right? Don't get toward heaven and toward others. And once you've done all of that, then you are absolutely free. You should not walk under a cloud of guilt and condemnation. Let me just say this, that God doesn't want us walking around full of guilt, full of, full of uh, uh, remorse and, and regret and all of that. Um, look. Our sins were dealt with through the blood of Jesus on the cross. So put your sins in the fountain filled with blood and then do as much as possible to clear your conscience with those key people that God puts on your heart and your mind. And once you've done that, regardless of how they respond, you are free. And I want to tell you something. We need to live in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. free. And boy, is this better than the other way or what? I mean, is this it better? Is. I mean, I mean, what a deal here in this Christian Christian experience in war. Well, you know, when when you do that, and some I've in the past I've used the excuse of, oh, they don't want to talk to me, then I just kind of left it. Right. Still, so don't use that excuse. You still have to forgive that person. Right. But your relationship right with God. If they don't want to forgive you, then it's between them and God now. That's right. That's right. But if you don't forgive them, it's between you and God. That's exactly right. And I think we've got to have this key distinction between forgiveness, which is a judicial choice and an act of our will on our part to release the debt. But then reconciliation is another matter. And we are not obligated to do business with or to have fellowship with crooked, twisted uh, individuals. We are not under any obligation whatsoever to fellowship with dishonest people. So forgiveness is something that we, uh, in our hearts, do between us and God. Reconciliation uh, requires the other party to repent and take responsibility. So I think that that's an absolute uh, key uh, ingredient to comprehend that's not one and the same. Because those of us that have sensitive consciences, we feel bad. We want everything to be right. We want every relationship to be restored. We want it to be too less and so. But um, and some aren't. Happen. Some aren't. Some aren't going to be restored. No, they're not. Not it's because of you. Make sure it's not because of me or you. Right. 
it, but it could be because of them. And but we still have to. And I know you agree with this. We still have to show them the love of Christ. We still have to love them, love our enemies. We still have to pray for them. But that, that we don't have to go sit down in fellowship with them. We don't have to go tolerate them. We don't have to be around them. But we still yeah. have to love them. Yeah, with voluntary relationships. Um, you know, if you're not married to your problem, then you don't have to have someone. The Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Look in the New Testament and how often it tells us to mark those that cause division. And there's more verses in the New Testament on separating from professing Christians than non-Christians. You check it out. There's more verses in the New Testament on withdrawing fellowship from professed Christians than from non-Christians. And I, I, you just got to keep the tightrope balance here yeah. of grace and truth. So would you say there's a, a lot of misconceptions, misunderstandings on this topic in the evangelical Christian church? Massive, massive. We have the sentimental view of forgiveness. We have the feminized view of forgiveness. We have the weak knee view of forgiveness. When the fact of the matter is, uh, uh, grace has a backbone, and, and forgiveness is founded upon the tough work uh, that Christ did on the cross when he absorbed your sin and my sin, when he, he took upon himself he who knew no sin became sin for us he took the wrath of god he took the judgment of god he took the the, the full brunt of god's holy vengeance upon sin in his own body boy when we begin to get some glimmer of, of comprehension of, of the depth of that jesus went to to purchase our forgiveness i'll tell you what that'll soften our hearts hallelujah what a savior that's when, when you, you talk about walking close with God, you walking close with God when you see Jesus big and people small. You see God, God big and problems small. You know what our problem is? We see our problems big and we see God small. So if we can reverse that, get it in perspective, and, and, and we can have the joy of God in our heart for forgiving us. And boy, God wants us to walk in joy, freedom, and peace, and, 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 and be peacemakers in, in, a, in a rough world. Oh yeah, that that is. So I, I know you've got some materials on this. I know you've written some books and some guides and that. So if somebody wanted to find out more about you and your ministry, how would they get in contact with you? Yes, thanks, Nathan. Uh, they can Google up my name, Harold Vaughn, uh, V A U G H A N. Uh, we have a book on forgiveness. Uh, it's called Forgiveness: How to Get Along with Everybody All the Time, and that's a uh, that's a pretty big title, but uh, you can check that out on our website. Uh, our ministry is called Christ Life Ministries, and uh, we're found on the website at uh, ChristLifeMinMin.org. We got all kinds of materials on reconciliation. We have something called Reconciliation Guidelines, and we have all kinds of material on relational issues, but the book on forgiveness is probably probably the most thorough work that we've got on the subject of forgiveness and they can get it from our website uh, of course you're promoting our facebook uh, account there's uh, references on there so yeah there's all kinds and there's some free stuff on the website that can help people look google up reconciliation guidelines by ralph satura a friend of mine and then google up forgiveness by harold vaughn and you can find some things that can help and I'll put some links in, in the in the bios and stuff. But if somebody's listening to the audio, that that's a good reference um, that they can find you there. And and brother, I really appreciate uh, your heart for the Lord. I appreciate your message. I appreciate your willingness to share that that you've had these struggles because a lot oh, yeah. of times people, you know, they'll start talking about everybody else's problems, but they don't want to talk about their own. Oh, hey, look, this hits home. This hits home. And uh, I've dealt with this. I continue to deal with this. <laughs> and, and, and so does everybody else. How so, long How long um, you been married now? Oh, 39 years, right? Hey, if you're going to be married for 39 years and, and another 39, <laughs> you got you got to learn to forgive, right? You better and you be, learn to ask for forgiveness. You better be good forgivers. And, yes. Uh, my wife doesn't offend me much, but boy, does she have to forgive me a lot. So that's just the way it is. That's the way it I'm is. Thankful for it. Well, brother, I appreciate uh, you being on the show. And if you want to learn more about handling life, you can visit handlinglife.org. I hope you will take this and see how it can apply to your life. 
And also think about, is there someone in your life that you could share this with? If you know someone who's struggling to forgive, um, use this as a resource to lovingly maybe help guide them to an understanding of forgiveness and God's word in your relationship with God and Jesus Christ. Thanks again for joining us. And I look forward to having uh, Harold on again. Harold, again, thank you so much for being on the show and I hope everyone has a blessed day.